welcome to uh, a <laughs> rather noisy area here of uh, Woodford State Park, Woodford, Vermont. So today we're going to take you on a quick little uh, campground tour of the campground. This is uh, kind of a special campground for me because this is the uh, place I did my very first solo cam camping adventure long before I had the YouTube channel. But uh, you can see it's kind of a beautiful place here. A lot of things to see and do around the area. There's a pond here you can do some kayaking on. There's uh, well, at least like four loops of campsites. Pretty good sized campground. Yeah, friendly people, as most campgrounds have. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little soggy this trip. It's actually spitting rain right now at the moment. But yeah, the sun was out while I was walking down to get myself in position to start this video, but go figure. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so so we're up on uh, is it Route 9 here? Went across uh, southern Vermont, so we're not too far from the Massachusetts border. And once you get away from the road, though, it gets quite quite quiet around here. And in the campground itself, there all you hear is the wildlife. But anyway, the, so this is the entrance road to the uh, state park, and they have a day use area as well. So you want to just come in and uh, spend some time on the water. You don't actually have to camp here. But they have the usual amenities. They got firewood available. They have ice available. They have a dumping station. Uh, all that typical stuff. And obviously pet friendly. Water spigots, bathrooms. Pretty much have everything you need here. Okay, this building up here is where you check in when you first get into the park. There's a parking lot on the other side of it. Just park there. Nice and easy to get in and out of. Go up in the back area there to get your firewood there. It's available at $6 a, a bundle. And there's the dumping station, drinking water, non-drinking water over here, toilet dump. You got all that. And it's a bit of a haul to get into the actual campsite. Okay, you come up to this little fork in the road right here. That one goes down to the campground and this one goes up to the day use area. So we're going to take a look at the day use area first. This road, you don't go down. <laughs> That's probably just the dumping area there for branches and other things. But you got a nice little day use area up here. Little porta pot in it too, which is good. Come in, park here. Let's have a picnic out on the, the uh, pond or reservoir, whatever it is. I think it's a, I believe it's Adams Reservoir is the name of it. And you can come up here, you can park here, have your picnic. Get the reservoir loop trail, there's a whole trail system going around the property here. And you got a nice little uh, pond here. They also rent kayaks too, so you can rent a kayak and go out on the water if you want, or you can bring your own. These are options available. Non-motorized boating only. There's another entrance to Reservoir Loop Trail right there. You got a selection of uh, kayaks and canoes you can rent. Some uh, <laughs> fake coyotes. I would help try to keep uh, geese out of the uh, fields and that here. Doubt it works, but they got them there for it. Paddle boats you can rent too. All right, back on the road in again here. To a nice little uh, water flow right here. Yeah, it flows out into this little wetland out in this area. So you get this nice little wetland. You got the water flowing through it. And, yeah, kind of a pretty place, even though the road is right across the way from here, but... It's in good, uh, good sunsets down in this area. And we have some little information boards here about how this is the uh, wildlife habitat. And who knows, I might even see a moose over here. 
this is a good place to see moose right here so we'll come back and take some check a check for that later so that'll be in a future video if, if I do see one so come back watch some more videos <laughs> anyway I'm gonna continue on this way here's another access way up to the uh, reservoir a little field up there we'll check that out in a different video as well but nice thing about the campground area itself is that it's set back quite a ways from the road so you don't actually hear the road at all from the campground some more more water flowing off the reservoir into the wetlands below you can see across the road there that building over there is the uh, check-in station that we were just at there for the check in at the ranger and pay for your firewood and everything then we continue onward into the campground itself and one note that uh, this campground is pretty occupied today a lot of a lot of the sites have uh, people in it <laughs> there's probably going to be an issue we're going to be dealing with a lot this summer here is uh, all the pandemic stuff is going away there but people are traveling locally rather than uh, further away here because things cost so much now to travel now and everything cost of gas and everything else so probably gonna see a lot more people camping now so they're just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> how to get reservations things like that but anyway we're heading uh, up towards the uh, campground now we have to actually climb a little bit of a hill by the way speaking of hills this campground happens to be the highest campground in in uh, Vermont highest elevation that is it's up at about 2400 feet so <laughs> so it's it we've got some altitude up here I noticed when I pulled in here that all my things like my uh, water tanks and that they were puffed up from pressure because uh, pressure is a little bit lighter up here because we're basically on top of a mountain area so nice place it's just too bad there's no actual views from up here still fully treed in but I'm up at 2,400 feet, so it's a nice area. All right, this campground has a, a good series of trails around it. So here's the campground itself we're heading into. We got a series of loops. This is the uh, lean-to loop. We got a uh, regular camping loop there, there, and there. We got this nice hiking trail system here. That's let's see, we're right here at the moment, and that trail goes all the way around here. Here, and you can hike all the way up in this area. <laughs> you have the Atwood Loop there. There's a lot of hiking trails here that you can do. Yeah, Adams Reservoir, that is definitely the name of it. All right. So we're going to check out the Lean-To Loop first, then we're going to check this loop, this loop, and this loop. And about right here is where I'm camped. So you'll see that shortly too. Now, if you have a group of people that have stayed in mul staying in multiple campsites, you can also come over here and use the group campfire circle. Kind of a neat idea. Nice big campfire pit here for the fire there you get little stone chairs plus of course you bring your own chair over with you and there's some firewood in the uh, pit there so obviously people do use it so kind of a neat little idea though if you got uh, a larger group in multiple campsites come over here and use that I think the first uh, area you come up to for, for camping is the lean-to loop I think I oops some holes in the ground too <laughs> they get quite a few uh, Lean-tos in the area here, it's kind of a quieter area because lean-tos seem to be a little less popular, probably because they cost more money too. But there's some nice uh, lean-tos here. Some of them will offer some decent privacy too. Not a lot of sun for solar panels, but definitely some nice uh, lean-tos around the area and on both sides of the road. I wouldn't mind coming up here and trying one of the lean-tos out sometime. Ones on uh, the uh, left-hand side here are going to offer the better privacy because they're aimed uh, away from the park, whereas the ones on the right-hand side, side are actually aimed right up the main road. These sites here, we can actually check out some of them because there's nobody here. This is Birch.
a standard affair or lean to. You can find uh, water spigots throughout the property as well. Now, this is a nice lean-to back there, but that one actually is occupied. I saw chairs in it. <laughs> but if you want privacy, that's the one to grab right there. If I come in, that's the one I'm grabbing. It's probably the best one here. And that brings us to the end of the lean-to loop. You also have uh, like this handicapped accessible lean-to over here. That's a new thing some of the parks are doing is food scraps. They're collecting food scraps. You bring stuff in here instead of uh, throwing it in the trash and it gets composted. Kind of a neat idea. And here you come up to uh, the first loop. Sites 1 through 23 are here. Nice little uh, area here. And this is site 1 right here. This is site number 1. And see, these have some cool fireplaces in this loop. I'm not sure how many of the loops have these fireplaces. I know my site doesn't. No. And the uh, lean-tos don't have it either. Also note on the lean-to loop, which is right up there, there's no bathhouse there. you got to come down to uh, this loop to use the bathhouse down here. This site on this side here, which is site number two, doesn't have one of the cool fire pits, so you just never know. You see, it's a nice quiet little area, except for the uh, maintenance guy with his radio on his uh, golf cart thing. I think a few different little sites uh, you can take. All pretty quiet down here right now. There's some nice sites down this way here. They're right down on the water. You can actually see the uh, reservoir. So quietly here, make sure there's nobody down here. I don't want to intrude on anybody's space if they got set up here. Oh yeah, these are some nice sites down here. 22 and 23. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're you're doing the uh, tent thing here, these would be awesome sites to get right here, right on the water. See the uh, reservoir. I like this site right here. Very nice. I can see myself coming down here too. Nice view of the uh, reservoir from right here. Wake up to that in the morning. And you get some privacy here too. Nice. <laughs> I'll have to remember this. Let's check out site 22 as well here. This is site 22, a little bit of a smaller site, but it's nice and level. Yeah, nice fireplace in it, yeah. Yeah, these these two, 22 and 23. It's a couple of really nice sites. This is site 18, another nice little quiet one you can just pull into and you get the fireplace towards the back there. Probably not great for solar, but not bad. And there's your bathhouse in this loop. And this brings us into the second loop, sites 24 to 55. Again, th this is Thursday afternoon, so it's actually emptier than I expected it to be, considering how difficult it was to get a reservation here. Uh, but apparently they have quite a few sites that are open right now, but I bet they're going to be starting to fill in tonight. People get out of work and stuff, they'll be coming in. But they're nice sights there. This one's paved too, by the way. The other the first loop was not. So, something to keep in mind if that's something you need. Some of the sites have uh, fire pits. Some of them have those cool fireplaces. That one right there, site 28. Most of them don't have very good sun for solar, but some of them do, like uh, Site 31 over here. Probably park a vehicle there and uh, with solar panels on and get some light on it. And if all you need is a really small site, this is Site 33, because you get the road to the bathhouse right next to it. And we get down here towards some of the sites again along the water, so these are the prime sites. 35, not a bad little site. And here's, a, here's a site with some good sun on it. That is site number 36 right there. That will get you some good solar charging. 38 will not. <laughs> 38 is a nice little tiny, tiny site. So if you're just in a small van like mine, you can probably pull in. But that's about it. 39, nice big open site. 
good view of the water from it. And so I get into a busy area down here with a lot of campers down this way. Obviously this is the popular spot. <laughs> All right, so now we're on the stretch of the main road after the uh, after the second loop. We're heading back towards the third loop. You can see the uh, first two loops are a lot closer to the road. So if it's quiet here after, you want to be in the third loop area. Because you're a lot further away from the main road back here. Another interesting one is that you've got a few sites that are along the main road, which is where I'm staying at. I'm at site 56 this trip. And I'm just off the main road. There's my site coming up straight ahead there. So this is site 56. As you can see it's just off the main road here. The nice thing about this one is that I have absolutely no neighbors whatsoever. Uh, all, the, all the sites are some distance away. <laughs> the smaller site, but I do have enough room for everything I need in it, and I could even have room for my trailer with my scooter in here if I wanted as well. So this site uh, works pretty well. And like I said, I have no neighbors. It's perfect for me. All right, just made a quick stop at the van here to change my shirt because I was getting too warm in that sweatshirt, and uh, also put a fresh battery and memory card into the camera. So, <laughs> so we're we're all set here. Make sure I lock the door, and we're going to continue the tour. All right. So yeah, that's why my shirt suddenly changed, because uh, so this isn't a different day, it's just getting warmer here, and I was wanted to get out of the sweatshirt. Alright, continuing the tour. And this is where we come onto the fourth loop. And another dumpster over here. Not sure what's up there with the hazardous waste storage area, but <laughs> oh well. That's not part of the campground tour. And this is the way into the main loop here, the last one. A few more lean-tos on the back area. And these quiet areas here. And another water spigot around the place here. And this road will bring you down to sites 85 and 8 through 87. So just a couple, a couple of sites down here plus the bathhouse. So I think this one's just a little dead end road with the, with the bathhouse and the uh, bathhouse, bathhouse, <laughs> and a couple of the sites down here. 85 over here. Nice quiet little site. 86. These sites look like they'll get some good sun, but the sun's behind clouds right now. Got your bath area here. A warning sign about bears active in the campground. <laughs> and 87. Then it goes through to the other side of the loop, but we're gonna go do the main loop around here. A little small site, site 63. Up this way here, you start getting into some more interesting sites here because they're a little bit further back from the road, 64 and 66 over here. Especially 64, that one's one of the most set back sites here. And it's unoccupied at the moment too. Let's go check it out. Take a quick peek up here. And a little bit more privacy here. This is a good one here because, like I said, you set back from the road a bit. Not too bad looking at all. Nice level area for a van or something. 66 isn't too bad either. Good privacy in that one. And down to site 67, a little bit closer to the road, but still not a bad little site. It's six, site 69 here. Also set back a bit from the road, but you also get a good view of the uh, reservoir. And site 70 is a nice little site too. It's nothing off of the uh, privacy of the uh, earlier site, but offers a really nice view of the reservoir down here. And it's got a nice level area here. You can park a van. And yeah, get a little bit of sunlight during the day. Oh yeah. Another site I wouldn't mind staying at myself. We got to this view in the morning. Oh, that would be awesome. Got some really good sights here. I gotta say, <laughs> I have to start making some return visits to this park too, I guess. A little bit further in, you get into this little 
path down to the campers beach and playground area. A nice field over here that could use a could use a good mowing. <laughs> uh, I need a basketball net down there, a little grill, a little picnic bench, a picnic table though, which is kind of odd. But anyway, and this is the beach over here. A quiet little beach. Probably carry a kayak down here and launch it down here too. Overall, not a bad spot. Oh, yeah. You can see across the way to the uh, public beach on that side. Well, the day use area beach with the boat rentals and that, so not bad. Not a bad little place to have some fun out. So after you leave the uh, Campus Beach Trail over there, you get up to what I call the wooden tent style cabins, which are just uh, basically uh, wooden shells. They have a bed in them, but there's no plumbing, bathrooms, kitchens, or anything like that in them. They do have electricity, however, at this campground. There's, uh, I think, three of them all together. I believe they're all occupied, so I won't be shooting any close-up video of any of them. Uh, this trail goes down there. And I think there's one more tent site down this little dead end road down here along with the cabins. Another water spigot. Good for the cabin usage. And again, these are wooden tent type cabins, so you have to cook outside the cabins and things like that. Though I suppose you could bring a small microwave and plug it into the electrical system. Yeah, there's a couple more tent sites down here. Oh, there's a fourth cabin. Okay, four cabins all together. Yeah, this site's 77 down here. And, uh, by itself and then just a little loop around. That's about it down this little dead end road. This site would be a much better site if you had some privacy. But you can see some of the cabins are handicapped accessible. Yeah, if you have a have yourself a nice little tent set up here. The 79 is a good site because you park down here and you set your tent up there and get to a little private space up in that area. Sites 80 and 82 are the ones on the other side of that uh, little site that you can see over there from the cabin area. And site 84, the last site on the loop. It's actually not a bad little site either. A little bit set back from the road here. Got all the uh, some of the wetlands and that around you, so may make it a little mosquito-y during the summer. There's a fire place here, a fire pit. Not quite as isolated as my site is, but not too bad. It does get a little bit muddy when it rains, though, unfortunately. But you get lots of solar charging here, and that, of course, brings us back to the end of the loop here. There's the stop sign here and the uh, way out of the loop. Head back right over here. We'll be back in my site again. And just to show you how isolated my site is from the rest of them, it's a bit of a walk, so I actually like the site I grabbed. It's 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 quiet here. <laughs> the only thing is, you get all the traffic of people going by on the main road around the campground. Outside of that, though, it's it's quiet. You don't have to deal with anything. I have no neighbors. I like it that way. <laughs> so, here we are back to uh, Wolf and Jack, Site 56. Not the best in solar charging, but oh well, I'm only here for two nights anyway. And that brings us to the end of the tour. I'm back at my site again. Nice little campground, it's pretty quiet here. They do hear, hear a fair amount of traffic noise from Route 8, but in the back loops, uh, you don't really hear too much of it. And if you got any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Remember, slow down and enjoy life. Do subscribe because uh, I do more campground tour videos as I go along here. And uh, otherwise, have a good day.